Yep. Okay. Welcome everyone to Aging in Action. And today we're so happy to have as our guest, uh, Rob Perot. And he's with a local group here in Sudbury uh, called Silent No More, Sudbury's Overdose Epidemic. And as I was saying before, I'm very concerned about what's happening here and, and in all parts of the province and Canada for that matter about the opioid crisis. So Rob, what can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your organization is all about? So my name is Rob Perot. I was born in Kirkland Lake, raised in Sudbury. I'm 30 years old. I'm a father of one. Um, and, you know, like many Canadians out there, I, I was laid off uh, July 10th. So, you know, I've been off work for about, I guess, a month or two. Um, and I can't wait to get called back. I don't know out there that are laid off, but I personally am a little stir crazy. You know, uh, I'm going a bit stir crazy. Um, you mentioned uh, before we kind of started recording, you know, you asked how the group came together. And I think it would be important to touch on that. Um, you know, we, we came together organically kind of um, through shared experiences online. When, when I saw Cassandra, uh, Diane's post online, <clears throat> having gone to school with her at uh, St. Charles College um, Secondary School um, and reading the entire post, it, it really struck a chord with me personally, um, as I'm sure it has for many people. Um, and so I just reached out to her and I said, hey, look, you know, I feel really similar and, you know, I, I can't believe how you encapsulated uh, some of the I issues with the way that she worded, um, you know, that post. And so <clears throat> after a few discussions, um, you know, she was talking about this group. And, uh, you know, that was interesting to me because I've been part of quite a few groups that have, have grown quite a bit, uh, especially from the protest days back in Occupy. Uh, that was a, you know, really challenging time, I think, for everyone. Um, when Occupy Wall Street kind of, you know, took off, excuse me, um, for all of the, you know, wealth inequality and the corruption on Wall Street and, you know, all those things um, that have occurred. So, um, yeah, the group came together naturally. It consists approximately of, you know, over 4,000 members now. Uh, and our admin team is approximately, I think, seven to nine people now. And we're looking at kind of bringing in more moderators just to help with content and, um, enforcing the rules, you know, which yeah. is actually why I kind of joined in the first place, just because I wanted to, um, you know, help build the group in a positive way so it doesn't devolve into chaos and nonsense. Uh, and, you know, people can really hopefully, you know, access it as a resource, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, somebody had posted something that I saw on Facebook, and that's how I found out about you and, and reading some of the posts there people's personal experience, either something that they've been or the loss of somebody who in their family or a loved one has died yeah. of opioid. And, yeah. it, and it's just unbelievable. Uh, and it's so easy to kind of write people off, isn't it? That, uh, you know, they're involved with, with drugs for whatever reason. And yeah, well, it's, it's sad, right? You yeah, know, it is. I think, I think we all experience, you know, from our everyday to day experiences, walking down the street, going to the corner store, picking up groceries, uh, taking the dog for a walk. You know, we, we see individuals that are generally classified as vagrants, homeless, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but the, the reality of the time is that, you know, we're basically as a society, uh, generally speaking, adhering to stereotypes and stigmas. And, you know, we're actually judging these people on face value without really fully understanding uh, the issue at all. So, you know, it is well, challenging. Yeah, and, and people are upset about the, you know, uh, you're right, every day you walk by, you see this, you see the, the needles downtown and all of that sort of thing. But behind all that, there's stories and reasons why people have got where they, where they are. So... Um, I don't know if anybody else has any questions about uh, what's going on with the opioids in, in well, Sudbury. Yeah, uh, I'll ask a, a basic question. I'm bringing it kind of back to the basics for viewers, for people that maybe don't really know what is the opioid crisis? Like, what is an opioid? Mm -hmm. what, what, what does that mean? To start us kind of at the basics so people that are watching might understand a little bit more. 
you like me to answer? Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, I'm not going to really expand on what an opioid is. I, I don't personally know the exact definition. Um, you know, my greatest concern, because, you know, a woman that I love very deeply, you know, passed away October <clears throat> 2019. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, you know, the toxic call, like, I, you know, I, I didn't really get into specific details, you know, with the, f the immediate family members, because it's a very soft or, or hard, you know, sensitive topic to really dive into. So, um, you know, what, what I got from the family is, is basically that it was, you know, a synthetic f drug, um, you know, carfentanil, fentanyl, um, that basically took her, you know, at the end of the day from us, you know, it was certainly an OD. And, um, you know, I, I think what, what was most terrifying to all of us is just the concentration of this drug and how little of it it takes to kill someone. You know, we're not talking about, you know, a line even, you know, if anyone knows the lingo when it comes to drugs, you know, a line uh, or, or, or a bing, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're talking about approximately two grains of sand, um, you know, that could that, that could potentially kill someone. In, in terms of the size of the drug that someone is going to consume, we're talking about two grains of sand right you know approximately so that 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 to me is very terrifying and i'm not sure how people are you know continuously enabling this to go on without any real um you know concern over the matter mm -hmm. i have a question for you um what is your mission statement so your group is new in here in the north in greater Sudbury what is yeah. your long-term gain like what is the mission statement what are you hoping to achieve by bringing a voice to the opioid crisis here in greater Sudbury that is a very good question and I thank you very much for it um, you know it's a challenge to kind of personify everyone's struggles everyone's missions everyone's goals everyone's um, willingness to commit to what exactly, right? So we as individuals, we all have our own um, struggles, our own demons, and, you know, our own uh, inclinations. So, you know, um, for example, I may be inclined towards being an agnostic, even though traditionally I was raised as a Roman Catholic, and I respect the church very much for some things. And, um, you know, I believe in tradition. So I, I presently am raising my son, Roman uh, Catholic as well. Um, and then others in the group may be, you know, Christian, right? Com you know, totally Christian. Um, so, you know, like with, with so many diverse beliefs and different, you know, backgrounds, you know, ultimately what we came together to do is spread awareness. Now, where that, you know, kind of is seemingly evolving, you know, is perhaps some some sort of organizing um, and, and direct engagement with politics on a level that we can organize and, um, you know, epitomize the problem uh, and hopefully really push for the funding we need, uh, you know, nationally. You know, we're not talking about a Facebook group here, right, of 4,000 people. Like, the entire Facebook group is expected to die in terms of approximate deaths this year from the opioid crisis. So, you know, if you want a good way to paint the picture, like we're expecting over 4,000 deaths this year alone from accidental overdose death, you know? So th that's to me terrifying as a dad. And I think it should be terrifying to anyone out there, uh, you know, that cares about the future of our country and where, where it's going. So, um, yeah, and I mean, what I, I guess I like about your group, too, is their stories, personal stories. So it puts yeah. a, na a wow. name behind. Uh, it isn't just this person died on the street, right? And I, and I actually recognized a few stories as I was going through. There was a few names that came up, and they, they, these were people that I know. These were their family yeah. members. And it makes it real when you hear about another opioid you know another person overdose whatever whatever there's no uh connection to that person because it's anonymity you don't know yeah, who and, it was. and i'll admit i'll admit you know i'm human and and i and i think that's important to to keep in mind too that initially you know when i was younger 
you know, in some ways, I may have even exacerbated the problem by ignoring a lot of issues, you know, I may have exacerbated the problem, you know, just by kind of not engaging in any type of dialogue. You know, mm -hmm. and, okay. and I think that's a important aspect to look at where, we, you know, we all really have to come together and say, OK, well, look, health care should be a human right. You know, we should all have, you know, dental care to a certain uh, age. You know, we should all have education. Like, in my opinion, education should be free, um, you know, and, and the list goes on. We like, you know, there's always going to be a battle for ideas that are on the table in terms of human organization. Um, and it's important for us, you know, to, to all stand up and to, you know, say what we believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. When, when you say 4,000 people, is that in Ontario? Is so, that Canada? Yeah, so, so that's nationally. That's, a, you know, it's, a, it's like a basic exponential uh, extrapolation in terms of mathematics, right? So from, I think, approximately January to March 2020, We've already seen around 1,018 deaths. Please forgive me if I'm not 100% on that. And so, you know, obviously you take the, the you know, January, February, March, 1,000, yeah. right, divided by yeah. three, it gives you mm -hmm. approximately, I think, 339 point something. Um, and so th that gives you the monthly value, right? And then so yeah. you go 339 point etc times 12 and that gives you that number of you know at, at a very minimum and then and, and this is what is most disturbing to me this is a very minimum you know like i'm trying to i'm trying to develop information that is factually sound so that individuals that are you know perhaps scholarly or in the academic world that have more influence and power can can really pick up on the evidence and on the facts and 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 you know perhaps help by giving us some more momentum you know. mm -hmm. And if I'm correct, also, that 94% actually of overdose deaths are actually accident. Are actually, is it 96 that are accidental, right? Yeah, um, uh, so I, think, I think it's 96 that are both accidental and preventable. Uh, but I'm not actually looking at any numbers right now. So you may, you may have so, to. But, but still, realistically, that's a very high volume. Right. Yeah, yeah it, it's, 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 I don't know. I have a lot of unsavory, distasteful ways to describe it. So, you know, I have to be <laughs> careful, but, yeah. um, you know, it's startling to say the least. It's terrifying as a parent. It's disturbing as a human being that considers himself to be decent in terms of my moral compass. Uh, you know, and, and I just, I can't see things getting better unless, we organize unless we talk about it unless you know we table bills for discussion and we pass something that is comprehensive you know and i'm not talking only treatment i'm also mm -hmm. talking about enforcing the law right because yeah. if, if we put a band-aid on the situation and we only provide treatment and we don't address the fact that companies are actively manufacturing the drug and the the antidote you know, yeah. then the, yeah. it's not going to get better, right? So mm -hmm. we have to be creative, you know, and, and we have to stand up together and, and, and really push for the changes we want to see. Well, part of what disturbs me is, is that people write off these people as if, uh, you know, they're the low lifes of the world, right? But when you look at a lot of these individuals, uh, this is somebody's husband, daughter, whatever, and I used to, many years ago, work for a transport company. Back in those days, um, in order for them to get up and down the highway, they were taking narcotics. And, yeah. and, and in this day and age, um, they'd probably be taking the opioids or whatever the, the drug is of choice now to, to handle the pain. And a lot of people got hooked on these drugs because they had uh, prescribed drugs from a, from a doctor. And then all of a sudden the rugs pulled out from under them and where did Absolutely. they, now they're in total pain and agony and where did yeah. they get these ba drugs? Basically on, yeah, basically on the verge of psychosis, you know, yeah. uh, if not, if not literally in psychosis. And I yeah. know all about, you know, certain mental health issues because of my yes. own personal experience and, and family members experience and shared stories, et cetera, you know? So yeah, experiencing, you know, a highly um, strong withdrawal, is, yeah. is not easy for anyone. Like if anyone smokes out there, they, anyone can tell you, you know, if yeah. you're addicted to something, quitting is not easy. Um, and ignoring it like it is, is, is mm -hmm. naive in my opinion. 
Gwen, I think you hit a really good point there also, and I'm not sure if Nikki's or Lizette's come across it, but I think 55 or older, over 40% of individuals are prescribed an opioid, opioid to start, right? Yeah. So those, that process then, and then aging demographic and, and those that are mm -hmm. seasoned, such as myself and many of us, we start, you don't realize the long-term effect. Absolutely. Uh, right when you're taking yeah. that prescription. And it, it seems to be, uh, uh, it's okay because my doctor gave it to me. Mm -hmm. It's not really, I'm not a drug addict. I've, I've got this legit prescription. Yeah. And so that's fine, right? And every and we're thinking, okay, it's just a bunch of kids, young kids, you know, they're, they've experimented with drugs and now they're onto the harder stuff. But in fact, it's right across all ages, all demographics. Doesn't matter what type of family you came from. You, you definitely, there could be somebody within your family and a senior who could be addicted to these things. And all of a sudden you can't have access. So what do they do? They turn to the street to get it or from some neighborhood drug dealer, right? Yeah, so, Lord knows. Yeah, so how do we, and, and what I love about this is just talking about it, making it a real thing and not just something that- well, you, It's so real. It, 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 it gets to a point where you can't ignore it right no so, absolutely so that, 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 that's now, where we're at yeah it's a crisis we've got a lot of people living on the streets either and a lot of it is mental health issues and maybe they take drugs to help ease the, their their pain or whatever physical mental whatever kind of pain you're in it isn't just that they're doing this you know because you know that's a great idea let's have fun absolutely. with some drugs there there's a lot more and many many layers to this this problem it isn't just stop taking the drugs well okay where's the, yeah. where's the treatment centers where's the yeah where's well the support? like yeah right and so government academics scholars um doctors you know they all love to talk about you know policies regarding funding and things like that you know and so like in my opinion it's pretty easy to generate funding when you're enforcing the law right like, if you were to hold any of these massive companies literally accountable, in my opinion, and perhaps find them a more appropriate dollar amount, uh, you know, such as over a billion dollars, like I forget what the biggest fine, you know, a company has yeah. received, but I don't even know if they've hit a billion dollars yet. And mm -hmm. yet these companies are making billions of dollars every year. Yeah. So how does that make sense? I don't think that makes sense to anybody out on the street. I don't think that makes sense to anybody in middle class, you know, lower upper class, even upper class, you know, if yeah. they're a half decent person, makes no sense. Like, we, you know, we need, yeah. we need to take the power back and, and, and we need to, you know, organize and, and, and get real about this crisis. Yeah, absolutely. Lizette, did you have any oh. questions? Uh, yeah, well, I just, I, I, I'm listening to everything that's going on here and I just find it really interesting. And I know I've read up on a lot of different stats and, and one of the things, you know, based on the kind of company that I own, um, you know, I've seen that in my past where actually people are stealing prescriptions from seniors. Yeah. And they're full of, you know what I mean? So yeah, like their own mother, their own grandmother, their own aunt, their own uncle, whoever. Right. And that's, yeah. that's the nature of addiction. Like, you know, and I think a lot of people disconnect with the reality there, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I wanted to know, like, are, are you holding any, um, like, what are you, what are some of the things that you're doing to, uh, create more awareness? So it's difficult to kind of put it all into perspective right now because we are in a lot of discussions. You know, we're here with you guys kind of, you know, given this platform to share. But at the same time, we're in private discussions with members of parliament like Jamie West. Uh, and we are also reaching out to others. And so um, between that and then organizing our own events, such as like um, a memorandum slash memorial where we can come together, discuss and, you know, uh, put faces to the names and numbers that that seem to some to be only a statistic on a page, you know. So, I think in terms of organizing, we're we're going to do our best to civilly, you know, disobey the status quo um, by showing up in numbers, uh, in force, by still adhering to you know COVID protocols uh, to try to keep everyone safe. Uh, but but regardless, you know, to to bring attention to the issues. 
uh, and to stand up for what we believe in. Because we've lost loved ones now, like the majority of our team, you know, like I, there were, a gentleman on our team has lost literally over, I think, 10, 15 friends and family that he's known over the years. And it's like, you know, when does it stop? This isn't normal. I talked to my dad. I talked to my mom. I talked to my uncle. I talked to anyone. This is not normal. OK, mm -hmm. their friends did not die to this extent by this age. So we right. need to do something for sure. Oh, there's so many young people. One of the things I like too that you're, you're doing is uh, you had a clothing drive and all that. And yeah, you gave that's, out. Little, that, that's really good. That was amazing. And I was happy to participate because you just sit, you know, when you're comfortable every day in, in your own whole bubble. I, <laughs> that's what I always say I'm in because I'm, I'm not seeing it on a personal level and and drugs scared me i never took any drugs because i'm a control freak i don't like being out of control but uh well and it's true so um, do i drink alcohol that's okay yeah hey, that's and, okay. and when i when i start to laugh or giggle too much that i know that's time to stop but uh luckily i never went down that path but it's happened to so many people that for whatever reason they started and and now some of them are homeless so um, I appreciate Absolutely, your efforts yeah. for, for doing that for the, because here we are starting into the coldest part of uh, Northern Ontario and people didn't have anything warm to wear. Yeah. So, well, yeah. And this, and the shelter situation too, is probably an yeah. important thing to bring up, right? Like, yeah. you know, we have, we have politicians today basically using homelessness as a prop for election. And I find that morally reprehensible to say the least, you know? So like we need to stop pretending like it's a, it's ever going to be a temporary thing. We've had homelessness, you know, yeah. since since the original monarchy before Canada had independence from in, the, in like the 1800s. Yeah. Homelessness is not going away. So yeah. to so to pretend like we can close the men's shelter, the youth shelter, any shelter for that matter, without a viable replacement yeah. is morally reprehensible, in my opinion. And anybody voting on that type of nonsense should get out. Yeah, no, I uh, I agree. I mean, I can think I grew up in downtown Sudbury, Carlton Street, actually. And I can remember in those days, they called them bums, right? It was probably an yeah. alcoholic. And yeah, they were there's living, lots of words, you know. Yeah, in those, so we're going back a long time. Like so I, you're right, yeah. homelessness has always been around to some degree. Mm -hmm. or, but there's a lot of it now, and there's a lot of problems with drugs. And, yeah. and we yeah. have to do more about it. Absolutely, you know, because like, what, what are we going to do? We're going to wait until a society, you know, devolves to a point where we have individuals like that was on Dr. Phil. I don't know if you any of you have seen this, but there was an episode where an individual was literally in the United States, I think, going around and tr trying to recruit homeless people to engage in fist fights on the street oh and God. record them. Yeah, live for money. So, you know, are, is that what we're waiting for, Sudbury? Is that what we're waiting for? Ontario is that what we're waiting for Canada is that what you want I don't want that like that's no. yeah you know well I mean uh, I think we're starting to run out of time and, and this is a topic that just yeah. needs to be talked about over and over again and, absolutely uh, you know we uh how are we doing for time, Nikki? <laughs> you still have a little bit of time. Um, yeah. But I mean, I think he has enough time to kind of do, before we do wrap up, is there any final thoughts, any final comments that you want our viewers uh, to be able to listen into before we wrap up the episode? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Nikki. Um, I'd like to take the time, you know, to shout out to um, everyone out there, you know, that's struggling. That, that's struggling with addiction, that's struggling with mental health issues, that's struggling with depression or, or you know, suicidal ideologies um, or ideations, forgive me. Um, any type of issue, you know, you're not alone. You know, you're, 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 you're not um, without hope. You're not without help, you know, unless you choose to be. You got to get out there. You got to talk about it, you know. There is hope for the future, but we do need to stand up and pretending like the issue is going to go away because someone else is going to take care of, of it is not going to work anymore. And I'm, and I'm sorry. I know life is tough. Life isn't fair. We all have loved ones. We all have lost ones, but we, we really have to stand up and, and, and speak our minds and vote 
for the changes that we want to see and, and, and hold the individuals uh, that are, are responsible for enabling this travesty to come into fruition responsible. Thank you. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty that's powerful. Really... <laughs> Definitely have passion. Um, and, you know, and <laughs> Thank I... <laughs> you. Thank you. <laughs> you do. And I think it's wonderful that you're bringing in a voice. And I think change does happen right if we stand up for what we believe in and bring yeah a voice you know it's, it can be long it can be a hard long road you know that takes over a decade but it has to start somewhere mm -hmm. and you know i i do commend uh members of parliament like jamie west uh for you know his um efforts on paper you know that that are are, are really pushing parliament to start talking about it like we have to table more bills you know, like, frankly, in my opinion, I know Parliament is pretty crowded already, but just the idea of, of being able to only table one bill a year for discussion is is doesn't make sense to me. And, and you know, there's a there's a private members kind of um, um, function, right, where MPs are only able to discuss, you know, one thing a year. And, and I don't think that makes much sense either. I think if it's hard, doesn't mean we should be discouraged from doing it. Uh, we should just simply perhaps take a more considerate thought uh, when we do it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, well when we're going to be able to share their group's information, yeah. everything on our website in addition to this episode, so people kind of have a place to go if they need to reach out, if they want Thank to support you. your organization, um, I'm sure that there's viewers watching that might be thinking of a loved one and thinking, oh my gosh, where do I turn? Where do I go? And maybe your organization can be the first step for them to be able to do so. And I mean, awareness, education, talking about it um, is definitely the first step. Um, I personally hear opio opioid crisis and I don't have personal experience with that. So I don't understand um the effects i guess that it, it has had happen because i don't have that connection so it's a very important yeah. thing to talk about yeah this. Kind e of everyone's sit, different and i've kind of yeah like with lizette kind of sitting back like wow you know um so i'm glad we were able to have this discussion we're able to help our community age in action and we want to thank you for joining us uh, for this episode yeah thank you for having me it's been a pleasure thanks a lot Rob. thank you take care all right, you too.